हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार एज यू मे बी वेल अवेयर दैट ईएलएसएस इक्विटी लिंक सेविंग स्कीम इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट टैक्स सेविंग म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम बट यू मे बी फर्दर क्यूरियस टू नो दैट ओके व्हाट आर द वेरियस इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स एंड पर्टिकुलरली टैक्सेशन एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ईएलएसएस सो थ्रू टूडेज वीडियो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम ट्राइंग टू पुट अप माय व्यूज ऑन द ईएलएसएस रिलेटेड फीचर्स एज वेल एज द इंपॉर्टेंट टैक्सेशन एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ईएलएसएस for the benefit of an investor or for the benefit of public at large so the first question which i am going to deal with you is to know what is elss equity link saving scheme as you all know that equity link saving scheme is one of the mutual fund which allows you to claim income tax benefit under section 80c of income tax act 1961 for the investment which you make into ells but please also know this particular point which is important that elss is nothing but an equity oriented mutual fund now the question comes that okay then mr bhatia let us know what is an equity oriented mutual fund and to bring the definition of the same i am putting up before you the provisions of section 112 of income tax law which defines the term equity oriented mutual fund as a fund which is set up under a scheme of mutual fund specified under clause 23d of section 10 or under a scheme of an insurance company comprising unit link insurance policy to which the exemption of clause 10d of section 10 does not apply on account of applicability of fourth and fifth provision thereof to put it simply you can understand elss equity oriented mutual fund scheme is nothing but an equity oriented fund which fulfills the following condition in a case where the fund invest in the units of another fund which is traded on a recognized stock exchange so it may happen two ways one the relevant mutual fund which has a scheme called elss scheme in which you are investing may be either investing directly in the equity share which are listed share or it may be investing in another mutual fund which is further one listed on recognized stock exchange and such mutual fund is also investing into equity shares let me read it for your reference in a case where fund invest the unit of another mutual fund which is traded on a recognized stock exchange a minimum of 90% a minimum of 90% of total proceed of such fund is invested in the unit of other such fund and such other fund and such other fund also invest a minimum of 90% of its its total proceeds into the shares of domestic companies which are listed on recognized stock exchange and in any other case now you assume a normal case where the mutual fund which has a elss scheme in which you are investing that mutual fund itself is investing 65% of total proceeds of such fund into equity share of domestic companies which are listed on recognized stock exchange this is a more prevalent thing what i am like uh, trying to say here my dear friends for your references that elss is an equity oriented fund equity oriented fund means a fund which is investing 65% of its investment into listed equity share so you can ask me that okay mr bhatia what will happen with the remaining 35% so the remaining 35% which is a maximum thing could be into debt could be into debentures could be into bond could be into treasury papers etc so there is a capping 65% minimum into equity 35% maximum into debt so you can say that okay can it be 75% equity and 25% into debt yes sir as i said 65% minimum into equity 35% maximum into debt so this proportion could be on a higher side for equity and on a lower side for debt so what happens basically a fund house decides upon the market situation if they find that the market is aggressive further they may invest more into equity or market is going into recessionary mode they may invest more into debts but there is a capping of 35% into debt so when you are investing into elss you should know that most of your fund will be invested into listed equity shares in the share market now let me put up one by one the key features of elss which as an investor are very important for you to understand one elss offers tax deduction of up to rupees 1.5 lakh under section 80c please read it up to rupees 1.5 lakh means if under section 80c you have already invested into lic ppf 
provident fund then what is remaining left to that you can exhaust under ELSA and therefore through a short few days ago or maybe few months ago I have already said that when a person should invest into ELSS when his or her tax limit the investment limit of ATC 1.5 lakh is not exhausted. Now suppose in your case ATC 1.5 lakh is already exhausted then you need not to think about ELSS or it may be that for future you want to reduce your exposure into other tax saving investment and want to enhance your exposure into ELSS then you should think about ELSS investment. ELSS fund comes with a lock-in period of three years and there are no provisions to make a premature exit or withdrawal a very very important point sir whenever you are making investment in ELSS you should be ready that okay now your funds would be locked in for a three year period any circumstance you are not going to get a withdrawal so it's a very long period that way secondly when you invest in ELSS in a SIP mode SIP mode then you should take care about that every SIP will take three year from the date of investment not from the first SIP say you invested first in January 2022 so that January 2022 three year period will be counted from January 2022 then you invest again in Fab 2022 by way of SIP say 5000 rupees SIP a month so that second 5000 will mature somewhere in from Fab 22 to Fab 25 so that is how the SIP related maturity can be thought about third one may invest any amount in ELSS there is no upper capping while the minimum investable amount varies according to the relevant fund house so there is no capping yet we know that from tax saving point of view 1.5 lakh is maximum which you once invest you will get ATC you can go beyond that it's up to your wish but then in that case I suggested why to go into ELSS you can go into other mutual fund scheme which can give you a short term exit plan also as well as long term and even a uh, equity oriented mutual fund beyond long term uh, beyond one year term the capital gain would be long term so why would you like to lock in your investment for three year period one however the minimum investable amount can be decided by the fund house depending upon their terms and condition ELSS funds are only tax saving investment with potential to offer inflation beating return this is a very important point sir usually say in India the inflation remains between 5 to 7 percent range or 6 to 7 percent range. Now say if you find out the uh, return track of all these mutual funds you may find that they are usually giving 3 year to 5 year return of around 12 percent to say 15 percent which is not a uh, kind of guaranteed return. But suppose on the inflation side you are at 6 7 percent on the return side say on an average you are at 11 12 or whatever 15 percent then you are beating inflation so this kind of investment is good which is able to beat the inflation the next point investing in ELSS fund gives investor the twin benefits of tax deduction as well as wealth creation because on one side you are saving tax when you are investing in other words I can say suppose you invest 1 lakh into ELSS you are into 20 percent slab you can say that effective investment is 1 lakh minus 20 percent which you save minus 20,000 so means effectively you invested 80,000 but suppose you get return on 1 lakh so your effective return increases further that is one way of looking into it. The portfolio of an ELSS fund mainly consists of equities however with a little exposure on the fixed income securities as well this I have already spoken with you so now you know that okay these are the key features of the ELSS which are important for any investor before he or she takes a call to invest into ELSS. Now let me put up before you what are the investment options when you invest into ELSS you get the options in terms of getting the return one dividend payout in this option what happens that as and when the mutual fund house will declare the dividend it will give you the dividend in your bank account however in dividend reinvestment they will declare the dividend but because you have opted for dividend reinvestment rather than crediting that dividend in your bank account they will invest that dividend again back to their mutual fund unit for buying more units for you at the prevalent rate of that time and the third option is growth option under which the dividend will not be declared to you and your fund related unit value will keep on increasing further now which of them should be selected by you it depends upon your whims and fancy that is on your situation 
if you believe that you need a monthly or an annual or a biannual whatsoever return which mutual fund house is generally giving that some liquidity is required then you may think about dividend payout however in a growth option you have to ready to build up your capital rather than receiving short and penny payments in form of dividend from time to time sometimes people use it as a feature say for an example near about 31st of march when the last date of investment would be there you invest 1 lakh rupees into elss and you know for timing suppose this is 1 lakh you know for timing mutual fund will give you a 10% dividend also as per its track record so you invest 1 lakh you get 10000 return 90000 is your effective investment but you get tax saving on this 1 lakh say you are into 30% slab so you save 30000 as tax on an investment net investment of rupees 90000 only so this is how you can also view that okay the net capital flow made by me is lower as compared to the tax saving which i am going to have on the equity oriented mutual fund but if you want to be into long term and make your capital then growth fund is one of the best in my opinion unless you need frequent dividend payout to continue your uh, fund related needs to satisfy your fund related needs now as far as nature of income from mutual funds is concerned one is the direct nature of income which is dividend income and indirect or whenever you will realize you will sell after 3 year period then you will earn the capital gain income after 3 year whenever you will sell your mutual fund unit whatever will be your purchase price and uh, the difference at which you are selling the difference will be treated to be capital gain income so these are the two probable income related options arising from elss even now let's understand the tax on the relevant income if the tax on dividend income is concerned sir that will be levied at the relevant slab rate which may be a new slab rate or which may be an old slab rate depending upon the relevant option which you have opted for i may simply say if you have opted for dividend option or dividend repayment or dividend reinvestment option then the relevant dividend will be credited or will be declared for you which will be treated to be your income from other source and whatever is your applicable slab rate according to that such taxation would take place as far as capital gain related tax liability is concerned since the lock in period is 3 year so beyond 3 year if you are selling an equity oriented mutual fund then the tax liability will be arising out of section 112 of income tax law which is 10% on long term capital gain and there it is a rule that above 1 lakh whatever long term capital gain you earn above 1 lakh that will be taxed at the rate 10% so suppose if you are investing 1 lakh rupees in a elss scheme which after 3 year period fetch you 1 lakh 25000 so on this 25000 10% tax rate would apply but if this is the only capital gain there is no other gain then up to 1 lakh no tax liability would be there so that is also a feature which is there and please understand in a other tax saving option like 5 year tax saver fd wherever whatever interest you will get would be taxed at the relevant slab rate here if it is long term capital gain it will be taxed at only 10% rate however no indexation benefit will be permitted to you so that is what is your call to take that okay should i invest in elss or not however as i said that elss comes with a lock in period of 3 year my dear friend so the short term capital gain tax rate of section 111a at the rate 15% is not applicable in the case of elss in my opinion at last before i finish i would like to add one more point please note that the deduction under section 80c can be claimed by a resident as well as non resident both so even when you are a non resident or a resident you can invest into elss and claim the benefit of section 80c related deduction but when your 80c limit has already exhausted then in my opinion you can opt for investing into a normal mutual fund scheme even so my dear friends i believe that this a uh, video through which i try to put up my views on the tax implication of elss elss for the benefit of public at large you might have found it useful and beneficial to you thank you very much for being with me if you have any other question you can write to me i'll try to give answers to them even and uh, i wish you all the best thank you jai